Welcome to my kitchen. I'm Chef Connie Powers and you're watching Farm to Fork on Rogers TV. Today I'm going to take you on another tour. Today we're going to Lindsay, Ontario to the Edwin Binney Community Garden. Now this is a unique situation. This is a unique collaborative farm. It's run by City of Kawartha Lakes, United Way, Crayola and Fleming College. Everyone has a part on the, in this project. You're going to see me wearing gloves today. That's a little bit different for me. I had a little knife mishap and I'm thinking this is safer for now. So we went and we met with the garden coordinator, the executive director of United Way Project and the co-executive director. These three people create a team that manage and grow food for uh, hubs and for food banks and for the community at large. We're going to take you on that tour. You're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. This was the brainchild of United Way. Crayola has the property. It's the most sustainable gardening and growth I have ever seen. So we are standing in front of a plethora of things that have come from that community garden. The things they grow there, you can tour it and you can walk through orchard, pumpkin, greenhouses, it just goes on and on. So today we are making a bubble ganu, which is a dip made with eggplant. Eggplant came up in the tour because it's something that not everyone uses, not everyone prepares. So I thought I would find something using an eggplant. So the bubble ganu is a smoky Mediterranean dip and it's made by roasting the eggplant and adding some other things. Then we're going to be making a, a nice chickpea vegetarian curry, all using delicious things grown at the Edwin Binney Community Garden. Let's get started. First thing we want to do is start with the bubble ganu. We're going to be roasting this eggplant. We rinsed it off before. It's nothing more than slicing it open and putting it on a baking sheet with some olive oil to roast it. And then we're gonna scoop out the flesh to, to make the dip. So we'll place that on. You know what I like to do? I do like to make some score marks in it. It helps with the cooking process and it helps it absorb some of the salts, flavorings, and the oil that we're going to put on. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to roast a red pepper with it. And all of these vegetables are going to be roasted and then pureed. So the name Baba Gnu is easily translated into dad and spoiled. For some reason, this has been called a spoiled dad dip. I'm not sure why. All right, we're going to also put a shallot on there. So you roast all of this. So we're starting this first. We can get it into the oven because it's going to take a little bit of time to roast. You roast all of these things. We take it out and we will make the dip out of it. All right, I have got the eggplant, the uh, peppers and the shallots. I'm going to just put some olive oil. Uh, a little trick I use in my oven is I put uh, a little piece of parchment paper just on top like that. It holds down the splattering in your oven and you don't have to clean it after. We're gonna put this in the oven at 400 degrees for about 25 minutes. All right, the next thing we're going to start is the curry. So we, what we wanna do is I have diced up one full butternut squash. We just wanna saute that in a little pan with some olive oil. All right, let's place the diced butternut squash into the pan. Could use it a little bit hotter. It's a big pan. All right, we wait for that to just cook up a little bit. Um, we're going to continue on with the curry. We're getting the sauteed butternut squash. Our eggplant is in the oven. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Yeah. 
and we're back. I'm Chef Connie Powers. You're watching Farm to Fork on Rogers TV. Today we're making two vegetarian vegetable-based dishes. One is a baba ganu dip, and it's made with eggplant, tahini. It's a wonderful dip that you can serve with non bread, which we will. It's in the oven right now, the eggplant, and we're making a chickpea curry dish. So we've started off with one diced butternut squash, and now we're going to add the other ingredients. And it's just a layered ingredient, and then you let the curry cook through with the stock. You'll see. The butternut squash, you can, you can just smell the sweetness starting to saute. So it's gonna take a little bit of time because the butternut squash yeah, is, was raw, but I want you to see what I'm talking about. The brown on this, this is the flavor that we're starting to really want. So keep your pan hot. It's a one pan dish, which is great. And then we're going to add a couple tablespoons of curry paste, red curry paste. If you can buy it in a small jar like this. If you don't have red curry paste, but you do have curry, mix it with a little olive oil and you'll have red curry paste. So I'm going to actually empty my jar, I think. We're going to put in one and most of a second. As I told everybody earlier, I'm wearing gloves today because of a little knife mishap and I'm keeping safe. And then we're going to cut up four tomatoes and we're going to, uh, they have to be fresh tomatoes. We're going to add in four diced tomatoes. I'm trying to remove the stem. Now these are greenhouse tomatoes. They are very firm, but I'm just going to make them into wedges. And I do like wearing these gloves. It gives you a little bit more freedom. All right, we are ready to add in the, the next ingredients. Everything has had a, a little chance to simmer. We're going to add in 300 milliliters of, of veggie stock, and then we're going to add 400 grams of chickpeas. The stock is now going to give it a chance to all start to break down and cook together. Notice there's no salt, there's no pepper. We're depending all on that, uh, to, on, on that curry paste. All right, we're gonna add in a little bit of lemon juice, the juice of one lemon. Okay, so we've got that in there. We're going to stir that around. The lemon adds a nice brightness to it. This would be best served on with some naan bread or on a nice bed of basmati rice, which we will be doing. And then I'm going to add in two tablespoons of Greek yogurt. Sometimes I like to add some in right now, let it cook a while, and then add it in just before serving. Look at how creamy that makes the broth at the bottom go. I can smell the curry in there. All right, that now will simmer away. It's done. I put the lid on and I simmer that until everything is tender and then I will put some coriander on the top of it. We are going to take you to the tour. I'm going to clean up and get ready to make the Bubba Gnu dip. We'll be right back. Hey everybody, welcome to our series Farm to Fork. Today we're at a very unique place. We're at the Edwin Binney Community Farm and Education Center. It's right in the middle of what looks like a parking lot, but it is the most sustainable agriculture you're going to find. I'm here with E. Kelly and Emily Beal, and they are... The Garden Coordinator. And co-executive director at United Way. And they're going to take us on a tour of what this looks like and we're going to find out what the produce is used for and what hubs can benefit from this. Let's go look at this. I'm looking at all of these things that are growing here and I realize this isn't someone's property that's owned. Someone donated, at least gave this space for you to grow. How did this start? Well, this began um a long time ago, it's been many years in the making, um, 
but it came out of uh, recommendations from the local poverty reduction strategy, um, where it was determined that food, sec food security is a major need um, in the community. A lot of people are food insecure. Uh, we have one of the higher levels of food insecurity um, in Ontario, in the Kawartha Lakes. Um, and then we have this great partnership with Crayola Canada. Their warehouse headquarters is here in Lindsay, Ontario, and they're on this beautiful piece of property, which is about four acres, um, and it was previously unused. They donated it to us um, in order for us to be able to fulfill our idea of um, creating a community garden, which turned into a community farm and education center. Um, but they allowed us to be able to create this space um, as well as a partnership with Fleming College to be able to use it as uh, an outdoor lab and a space where students can come and learn um, at the same time as us being able to produce food for the community. And here comes Chantel Ingram. She is another co-executive director. Co-executive director. So we have the three people who actually run this place. And so it's a collab between United Way, Crayola, and the city of Kawartha Lakes. Is that correct? Uh, and Fleming College. And Fleming College, yes. right. So uh, Crayola, it's their land. Mm -hmm. United Way? Yeah, so this came about because of an idea from um, the previous executive director, Penny Barton Dyke. Um, so it's sort of the United Way's um, brainchild, I guess. Um, so somebody came back here and looked at the back of Crayola and said, look at all this land. Mm -hmm. And this can be better than just storing pallets and storing things. This can grow food. Yeah. And, and was that about five years ago that? Well, seven, it was or six or seven years ago, it was uh, the former general manager suggested this space when we, he heard about the project that we were working on. And, and so it started. And who funds it? Yeah, so we rely heavily on community donations to run the space. Um, we have wonderful, of course, like, like I mentioned, partnership with Crayola, who provide us some, um, some economical support, but we also get uh, funding through the Ottawa Marie Pick Foundation. They are a wonderful supporter of this project um, and funded heavily. And then other than that, we are relying um, on designations, people donating to the United Way and um, designating it to the farm. All right, so we are looking down at a pumpkin patch. Give us a little bit of a breakdown on how your season starts. So the three of you work together as a team. How does the season start? Who, who comes out first and says, let's, let's start growing? Well, I think our season starts in January, February with sure. planning, where we're going to plant all of our crops. Uh, we base it off of what the community has said that they wanted and what we grew where last year so that we're rotating our crops and we're providing the food that people are actually going to eat and not a bunch of hot peppers and eggplants. That's true. So the community is using this food. Do they come out here and choose it or is there a hub that they go to and, and this is uh, provided for them? Yes, yeah, so we distribute our food to uh, local charities and nonprofits who will then distribute it further to their clients. Uh, so Places like Fourth Lakes Food Source, Center of Hope, a place called Home. Is that so, Salvation Army. Salvation Army. Army. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have a food bank there as well. So all over the city of Kawartha Lakes or in Halliburton County. In Halliburton County. We have, uh, so far this year, grown 15,585 pounds. Okay, let's go. That's been donated to. 15? 15,585 pounds. Pounds. Yeah. And so we've calculated that uh, based off of what the produce would cost at a grocery store. So for a financial benefit to the community, that's $47,362. That was saved yeah. and, and fed the community healthy food and not... Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the food banks are great places, but we often notice that the perishables, uh, the non-perishables are what are donated there. Mm -hmm. And this is the stuff that's hard for the community people to, to acquire. That yeah that they really do need. Yeah, this is the nutritionally dense, healthy, health-promoting food items, um, as opposed to the preserved, heavily salted or sweetened. So when this is donated, is there any sort of education that is given to the recipients, if they need it, on nutritional value, nutritional eating, just the basics, uh, or is it just donated and... So we they... mostly donate it and then we provide um, recipe cards. But typically we grow things that um, 
the standard Kawartha Lakes and Halliburton communities um, can make use of and enjoy. So then we provide recipes based on those products as well as um, recipes that are don't require too many resources or easy to make, don't require mm-hmm. too much time, keeping in mind that people's lives are quite stretched. Um, they don't have a lot of time to cook or maybe don't have um, a lot of resources in their kitchen to be able to make food, so. Okay, yeah. this is a lot of work. It is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's just the beginning too, there's so much more back. You're just waiting for the snow and the frost to come yeah. and you can go, woof, I know. Yeah. All right, so the, the families get this food. Mm-hmm. How do you track uh, what they benefit from? Calories, meals, how do so you? Everything that comes off of the farm and is donated is weighed. So we know okay. the exact weight of what we're donating. And then using that weight, we can calculate the uh, nutritional value of it. So the calories, the carbs, proteins, fats, and all the vitamins and minerals. Uh, but we figure we've uh, provided roughly 3,876 meals so far uh, to the community. This year, typically, the organizations have been coming here to pick up, and we've scheduled oh, okay. their pickup times and, and dates. So today we had uh, the Fleming Culinary Program. So at the end of the season, when you're planning, or at the beginning of the season, in the winter when you're planning, and you find you've got a need, who do you go to? Is that United Way that steps up? Yeah, like for the, the crops. The, anything that you might need, materials, resources, and you, you're planning and you say, this is what we need for the next. So we would look at our, our budget as well as we would look at granting sources. So like a, to get this started, a lot of the outbuildings aside from the hoop houses were through grants that we wrote. Fleming's been involved in the project from the very beginning. So in the er- early discussion stages about seven or eight years ago, they were involved in what would this look like and providing support and just even just a, a location for us to have our conversations with other members of the community. We had quite a few stakeholders at the table. This year we ran a adopt a car campaign so people could adopt a row of peppers or adopt the asparagus and <laughs> I want to adopt some asparagus. Oh, please do. <laughs> we'll put you on the list for next year. <laughs> yes. That would be great for us actually. Yeah. <laughs> and so then the rest of our major supporters are on our pillars of gratitude on these two pillars of our education. Oh. And what do you use this section for? Is this an education center? Like this a, is, yeah, for our uh, um, school workshops or when we have camps um, or youth groups come to do yeah. programming. This is kind of the space where we do it and they usually take part in um, planting or weeding or doing some work in the, the raised beds here. What about microgreens? Any microgreens? Uh, no, no, we haven't gotten into the microgreens. That's an, another entire... Yeah. Yeah. Really vertical growing in here. This use of space. Wow, it's neat too. It's so. Is this Fleming students also that have? So Fleming built the uh, greenhouses. Yeah. They run a uh, farm field camp in October, just after Thanksgiving. So last year they built this, uh, and then this year we grew cucumbers in here with some dill. So going on to a farm, I I realize the farmer is responsible to harvest all of this and then market it. And that's where it's a little bit different for you. So you harvest it all and it's already marketed. It's already sent out. Yeah, we set up our partnerships um, during the winter time usually. So we've got everything um, allocated for come the summertime or the springtime. So we've got all those partnerships set up and we know each week where the produce is gonna go. Every day there's a pickup. Um, the produce is going somewhere different uh, each day of the week. Um, and does anybody have a preference like we don't want broccoli, nobody eats broccoli, and, or does it you, t- you give them what you no, have? Yeah. yeah, it kind of depends on the week. Sometimes um, like this year one of our partners said no more cabbage. Oh, and they weren't getting they rid of it. They weren't able to get rid of it fast enough, so we, we just distributed it elsewhere. Wow, because yeah. cabbage is a great food. You can do lots of stuff with it, but... Yeah. And we do reserve a small portion of the produce for sale. We have a farm stand in front of our office every oh, once a week, every for, Tuesday. For the general public or for employees, <laughs> anybody who... The general public, and then we sell it at um, a pay-what-you-can model, so folks can come and if they're able to pay full price, we have listed prices and they can do so, but if they're unable to pay that price, they can pay 
half price, they can pay a quarter of the price, they can pay nothing if they're not able to, um, just to ensure that everybody's able to access the program. Access. So the, those people can choose, come and choose what they want. Total autonomy, yeah, yeah they can pick and choose what they like. Um, they don't have to take anything that they don't like versus sometimes that's the nature out of food bank, so they can pick and choose the things that they want to take and then it stays there. So it replicates that shopping experience. Yeah. There's a little bit of food sovereignty as well as the food security, right? Because it's, the, it's their choice what they what they want yeah. mm -hmm. and what they can have. Mm -hmm. I like it. And we're back. Wasn't that a great tour? It, it's a place I didn't even know existed, and now I do. We have now taken out the eggplant and all of the roasted vegetables for the Baba Ganoo. The chickpea curry is cooking, it's simmering. It, it has a lot of time that it can sit there. You're going to serve that on rice, but for now, let's let it simmer. Now we're going to scoop out uh, the flesh. So we're just scooping it. If a little bit of the skin goes in, you can either pick it out later or puree it in. All right, I'm going to add in a clove of garlic that we roasted, all of the red pepper, and a one onion. You could have added more onion in there. And then we add in the rest of the ingredients. So nothing more than uh, a little bit of lemon juice. So put the juice of one lemon. Seems like a lot, but it's going to give you a very nice bright flavor against the smokiness of the eggplant. And then about a quarter cup of tahini. There was a little bit of oil on top, but that'll just make it creamier. And uh, let's put a little bit of sesame seeds in it. That's going to add a little nice texture. Now what I'm going to do is take this over and process it, and we'll be right back to show you what it looks like. Okay, it is processed, let's see what we got. Now I could have gone smoother, but I decided not to. I like a little bit of texture left in it. On top of that, we're going to add in some feta cheese. And then we're going to drizzle some olive oil on that. And then you're going to serve that with some fresh warmed naan bread. And there you have a delicious bubble ganu dip. That's done, that can be chilled. It even takes on a nicer quality once it's sat for a little bit. We're going to set that aside. We're gonna go back to our curry chickpea. It is really simmering at a nice rate. I think we can turn it down, give it a nice stir. You look at the vibrancy of that, the orange of the squash the orange of the curry paste, delicious. Now, as I said, when you go to serve it, it's good to add a little bit more yogurt to give it just another level of creaminess. It is shut down. There's some little residual heat. There we go. This is a way to get around using any kind of a cream. It keeps the fat down in the dish. On top of some rice, this is going to be a really delicious hearty meal. And then we're gonna to top that off with some chopped cilantro. It's probably uh, about four ounces of chopped cilantro. And there you have it. We have a delicious dip to start our meal and a warm entree to finish it off. I hope you enjoyed our tour today. We'd like to thank the Edwin Binney Community Garden for taking us on a tour and trusting us with the process. We'd like to thank you for showing up today. Until next time, keep cooking.